my beautiful workshop is clean and tidy after 14 days of making our katana. I have tidied the workshop and this is a habit that I've been getting into and I am so thrilled that I finish a project and now tidy the workshop. It has taken eight years of practicing the craft of blacksmithing to finally get to the point where tidying the workshop is an exciting thing. I never used to like tidying workshops. And now look, to me now, there's nothing more exciting than not only tidying the workshop, but getting in bed at nine o'clock at night. That's terrible, must be a sign of me aging. So what is on the books for today, Alec? Well, good thing you asked, because I only just found out about 35 seconds ago when I made the decision. So as anybody who has visited the About Me section on my website will know, I learned blacksmithing from a gentleman named Brian Brazil at the age of 13. So of course it was then that the hobby that had been my hobby for about two years or so, really, really, uh, the desire for it to eventually become a career got very solidified. And as a 13 year old, especially after learning from Brian Brazil, I was just so motivated to turn uh, this craft, this hobby, this incredible passion of mine into a career. And I have to say, I'm completely thrilled and honored that I've been able to do so, and absolutely in large part because of what I learned from Brian Brazil. Now, why did I get interested in learning from him? He made beautiful tools, massive inspiration for all the tools that you see me using here, all the hammers that I've ever made are because I learned how to make hammers from Brian Brazil. And I loved the artistic work that he did, some of the beautiful forms that he would make with a hand hammer, his horse heads, his animal heads, and indeed, some of his leaf work. And it indeed occurred to me that since I don't have a lot of time and since it's been an extremely long time since I've tried to copy and emulate any more of his leaves, I should give it a go again. And so I'm giving it a go. There was a time where all I would do was try and copy his work. Uh, now, obviously, I've been making a lot of knives and what have you, but we have a little bit of time. So we're going to make a big old leaf, a big old Bram Brazil inspired leaf, which is going to be very exciting. We might even try and make a candle holder out of it. so far is I have been using the round side of my rounding hammer to pull the material out in a lateral direction. And I'm working on the side that I'm most comfortable with, which is the side that's closest to me, and turning 180 degrees. I started in the middle of the piece and then gradually worked out instead of working the edge first. This is very important. And of course, you'll see that the hammer angle when I'm striking is way, way, way down there. That way we're working with very little amount of surface area contact, helping pull it out in that lateral direction, helping get the draw that we want for this particular leaf. We want it to be a very wide leaf and we want to have material spare back down here so that eventually we can bring it back down and really get the lobes of the leaf to come back around and hopefully do it all with the rounding hammer. It takes time, the wider it gets, the faster it cools down because the more is in contact with the anvil and the greater the surface area to volume ratio, which means that more of the steel is in contact with the air so it cools down faster. And of course, that means it's time to take another heat. out the middle, I'm now gonna start pulling down the lobes. So I change the angle between my hammer and the bar so that we're now pulling the lobes down with the reduced surface area contact of the round die 
of the rounding hammer, and out she goes. That lobe gets pulled out. It's looking beautiful. So why is it that I only touch the edges close to the end as opposed to earlier on in the beginning? Why do we work from the middle out? Well, the reason for it is as follows. When we work from the middle out, we keep the edges thick, which means they hold their heat, which means that they stay hot while we're moving the inside, which in turn is causing the outside edges to need to stretch. If they're cold, they crack. So we keep the thickness in the edges to keep the heat in the edges until it's time to forge out the edges as we just did and as we're about to do. The middle is the thickness we want. We're gonna get the final texture on the side that is gonna face out of the leaf. Then it's gonna be time to draw down some material behind it and start thinking about how we're gonna make a candle holder. There we go, we got a big old spread on it. Actually, I, uh, I'm very pleased with how much we brought down the lobes here. Because I haven't tried one of these in a while, and I remember the last time I did, I struggled getting the lobes down as far as I'd like, so I'm pleased I did get them that far. But it doesn't really look like any of the Brazil leaves. It's just a big old leaf, which is fine, and it's not necessarily that much of a problem, because it's fun to move metal. It's fun to play and practice and learn and try different things and start moving the metal around. But one problem I have made is I didn't plan in enough advance how it was that I was gonna move my material down in order for us to make a candle holder. So it means that I have all this very thin material while I need to heat up this very thick material. The problem with having thin material and thick material on a project that you're working on, thin material heats up very fast, comes to a high temperature, and is gonna oxidize and scale away. Whereas the thick material takes a lot of time to get hot. And while it's getting hot, the thin material is rusting away, oxidizing away. So that's a problem. How am I gonna solve this problem? Uh, I, I, I don't know. So this is where a coke forge comes into its own because you can have a much more isolated heat. Here, I'd have to heat up 14 inches of material that I don't need hot if I wanna poke it all the way through. Coke forge, you wouldn't have to do that. What I can do, however, is I can come from the end of the forge here, poke the leaf, outside of the forge. Then the radiant heat from the end of the forge is gonna heat up the bar, but not the leaf. And so now it's hot, we're gonna cut off a little bit of material. Working all the way down to the center with the round side of the hammer over the Brazil style hot cut hardy indeed. Oh, the serendipity is wonderful. Oh then, Jay you can't edit it out. <laughs> we can't edit out that mistake. I will then gently break it off with a pair of tongs, and back in the forge we go. Dokily, dokily, pokily. So what have we done? Well, I made a halfway chisel mark so I know where I'm gonna fold this over. We made an isolation here at the horn with the round side of the hammer so we have a gentle fall off from our, oh, I'd say about half inch square there. And of course, then using the Pilkington power hammer, we then drew out this extremely long I'm gonna say barb, because looking at this, it actually almost looks a little bit like a stingray. Which is funny, because we just made a katana and we use stingray leather. But this is not that type of stingray, it's a metal stingray. No, it's a leaf, and it's about to be a candle holder. 
works because the next step indeed is using this cut as a way of isolating a point of very limited structural integrity. We can also isolate the area where we're gonna bend something. So we're gonna clean these surfaces. We're gonna bend them over onto itself and we're gonna forge weld them together. Once forge welded, this piece here is gonna be bent up into the curly cue that holds the candle. Hopefully better than the last curly cue that held a handle, candle. And of course, we'll then have a nice finial on the other end. Back into the forge we go, so it's hot, so we can brush the scale off, flux it, bend it, get it ready for the forge weld. Okay, we have a cup formed in it. We got the leaf bent. It's looking nice. The, the little stem there, it is whipped around and we're gonna bring it around and we're gonna work it up a piece of 20 millimeter round, three quarter inch round, roughly the same diameter as any candle that'll go in it. And we're gonna go up the whole thing and that's gonna hold the candle. It's lots of fun, enjoying this, enjoying this. I don't get to do this type of work often. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. It's been very enjoyable because I haven't done any hand forging in a while and I've noticed that I haven't been doing any hand forging in a while. Out of practice, but I had an absolute huge amount of fun. Hand forging is a lot of fun. I hope that you guys get out there and start moving some metal. It's a blast. Thank you for watching. Tomorrow's episode is going to be very exciting. We're doing some experimentation with a material I've never worked. So be sure to subscribe and I'm going to see you then.